Okay, so, hey guys. So I'm gonna take you through how this valve controller works. Um, we have, the overall goal of this experiment or project was to um, be able to control the flow of high pressure streams of fluids like gases. Um, so we're using these solenoid valves here, which operate on a 24 volt circuit. Um, and that 24 volt circuit um, comes from this power supply which converts the walls uh, 120 AC into 24 volts DC current. Um, the 24 volt circuit goes uh, from here to, I call these junction boxes right here where we have everything getting plugged in um, just to tidy up cables and um, one of the key uh, goals of this project was to minimize the amount of soldering and keep it as modular as possible so we can uh, do this on multiple experiments and stuff like that. So um, green is the ground wires and white uh, is the hot wires um, and the industry standard black is hot but I wanted to uh, make the 24 volt hot wire um, different from the 5 volt Arduino hot wires so I went with a white cable for that just so we know uh, we don't uh, get the cables mixed up. So these are the four solenoid valves that we, ch we can operate um, from this Arduino right here. Uh, so the 24 volt side of the circuit is linked via these relays right here. Um, and I had to salvage some three prong power cables to get the wires for these things. Um, but it was, it was pretty straightforward, just a razor blade and pliers and some cut fingers and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, it came out pretty well, I think. And uh, this is my best effort to keep cable management as good as it can be. Um, this, so, this is, so this half is the 24 volt side. This is the five volt side, which is operated by Arduino and uh, so the Arduino uh, can send a 5 volt current to uh, this half of the relay and so when a 5 volt current is received it flips a switch on the 24 volt side allowing the uh, 24 volt half of the current to uh, circuit to complete. Um, the Arduino controller right here uh, can upload code to it um, to have you know presets like you know uh, open valves, you know, one through four in some kind of sequential order, or the sky's the limit in terms of, uh, you know, presets, because we can do whatever we want within the code. Um, the next step is going to be utilizing these analog in pins here, um, which would let us take in uh, temperature and pressure readings from various equipment to uh, control the flow of gases and other experiments. Um, so. The whole point of this was to keep everything modular and scalable, um, which is the reason why we have another uh, place here where we can place another four relays and have an additional four pumps. Um, on this though, it's going to be pretty hard to mount another four, but um, we'll just keep going <laughs> or we'll get another table. Um, but yeah, so that's uh, the gist of it. Um, so this is the electrical side of stuff uh, and in terms of the computing side of stuff we have uh, a lot of code going on here so um, my postdoc wanted me to have uh, a graphical user interface to go with um, this Arduino valve controller uh, so for ease of use so that we can have other students operate it um, and uh, just keep it as user friendly as possible so that was a big challenge because Arduino is does not have like a really officially supported uh, graphical user interface code, so we ended up having to take uh, or I had to program uh, processing and create this user interface here, and uh, the result of that is we now have an on-screen display that someone can open up and run on their computer to uh, operate these valves. Um, for some reason I couldn't make it a toggle switch 
So we have one button for turning a valve on and another button for turning it off. It's just the way things are for now. Um, and within the, so the processing code was the biggest hurdle to cross. It ended up being, you know, almost 136 lines of code just to get a basic little layout like this that people can click on buttons and things. But um, it is nice to use now that it's all working. Um, the Arduino code is uh, really straightforward, pretty simple. It's essentially uh, just like if you had a four LEDs hooked up to an Arduino um, controlling you know when each one is uh, turned on or off um, except in this case we have this serial dot available so it's so the Arduino when I have this code uploaded to it is listening frequently for um, any signals from the processing code so when you click a button here it sends an output that is recognized on the Arduino side um, and that output varies and based on that so Arduino here takes in val which is with the term that I call the um, data received from the serial port and with that value depending on what it is it will either open up or close one of these four solenoid valves so to show you it working right now I have it turned off so um, this power supply is plugged directly into the, the wall outlet. Um, so I have it turned off right now just to be safe. So we have that turned on. We can almost hear the uh, LED come on. So the power supply is live and we've got the Arduino running. And so now uh, within this code, if we just do that, you hear the click. So valve one, so this relay is now live. So the connection here was um, flipped on, completed the circuit on the 24 volt side, which uh, this is pump one right here. So now pump one is open. And if we click on valve off, you just heard that as well. You see the light shut off. Valve one right here is now closed. And so the reason we needed to go with a, this ended up being I think $150 power supply was because uh, converting the wall's 120 AC current into uh, 24 volts DC, it does need a pretty high power rating. Um, the power supply is most strained when all valves are open um, because it needs to supply a certain wattage to each valve. So um, it scales linearly with the number of valves that you have open. Um, so to place maximum strain on it, if you open up all of the four valves, the power supply is now having to send four times whatever the amount of power per valve to keep the solenoid open um, is. And uh, it's pretty straightforward to just turn off everything and we'll leave valve four on just so that you can see that the code is working. And yeah. So that's how it operates. And I also have some other code that has a um, pre-programmed default, so I'll run that just to show we can, uh, so I created some test code as well, just for the sake of um, being able to check all this stuff, so valve check one, two, three, four right here, so we're going to run this, I'm going to upload it first to the Arduino, oh, okay, so when we get this error message, it's because the Arduino was busy listening for the um, for the processing code. So we have to first stop the processing code so that the Arduino can be free to upload stuff over the serial port, the USB cable, it's a fancy name. So what we're gonna do again, now that we've stopped the processing code, is we're gonna make sure that's looking good. So go back to here try uploading it again. If that doesn't work, we're gonna, okay, there we go. Okay, so we got the code going. Um, I just adapted the basic blank thing, just having it, all it is is you're having four LEDs go on sequentially and um, when the next one turns on, all the others turn off. Um, but you just set them to outputs and you go through this. Uh, and it's a, 
it's a loop, so it iterates indefinitely. Um, and so if you see here, I've got these lights, so the relay is turning on, and valves one through four opening up sequentially, and each one remains open for one second and then closed for the next three. So um, that's just an example of the preset we can have defined for this thing. Um, but, you know, the sky's the limit in terms of programmability, so we can uh, start next step is building in conditions and you know if temperature probe is you know, below five degrees C or something we can have that upload um, to this valve controller which would let us uh, be able to run experiments over the weekend which was the main goal of this project um, and then stopping the code is just a matter of disconnecting the Arduino and now that that's turned off um, the relays are not being flipped on, so the 24 volt circuits can't um, open. So, um, yeah, so that's an, a way of doing an emergency shut off if we had to. Um, it's good that these valves, their default position for safety is off. When they receive the current, that's when they flip on. Um, but yeah, and so the other, so that's the coding side of stuff. This is the electronic side of stuff. And the other, part of this project was just mounting everything which was more work than I thought it would be but I think it ended up turning out okay um, it's just making a lot of runs to the local hardware store and uh, getting lots of screws and nuts and coming back and also washers because they are a lot more important than I originally thought um, but you know, that's all good. And the other thing I did was place little spacers underneath the uh, power supply. I can't really see it there, but there, just so it has feet so it's not directly on it because the power supply is likely to get hot um, if all four valves are open, or any valves open for any prolonged amount of time. So I just figured it would probably be best practice to keep it slightly elevated so it doesn't melt the uh, Lexan. So this not polycarbonate, we went with Lexan because uh, it's just easier to work with and you don't have to worry about it um, making those spider web cracks when you drill through it. Um, the only structural problem I think with this so far is it is a little bit flimsy. Um, so we're probably going to um, cut some more pieces of Lexan and glue that to the bottom of this just to add some rigidity. Um, but this thing's going to be sitting on top of a table set. So it shouldn't really be too big of a problem. Um, and the other thing was, uh, I thought I might need a breadboard here, but I didn't actually end up needing it because we were able to, I was able to get away with just having these little five volt cables connect into the same port on these PCBs. So that was a relief. Um, and then just trying to have a little bit of cable management, just so stuff's as clean as possible and hopefully no fires <laughs> or explosions. So, um, yeah, it's been a good project and uh, it is definitely scalable and probably going to keep working on this to get added functionality such as the ability to take in uh, external inputs like temperature sensors and barometers and stuff like that. So overall, I'd say it turned out pretty well and um, it's been a lot of cable cutting as well. I'm pretty new to the electrical side of stuff, but um, yeah, we avoided using solder and uh, it was just being patient with a razor blade and cable strippers and pliers and all this stuff, but um, I think it ended up pretty well and we just, I just took all the cables and hid them under these PCBs and used them as little forests to keep track of everything, but I think it's good. Thanks.